With a BPD, it's completely opposite and different. A BPD always internalizes the anger because of the fear of abandonment. Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I will be reacting to... Three main differences between covert narcissism and borderline personality disorder. So three main differences between borderline personality disorder and covert narcissism. Number one, the expression of the anger. A covert narcissist may be passively aggressive, but their projection of the anger is going to be always outwards. With a BPD, it's completely opposite and different. A BPD always internalizes the anger because of the fear of abandonment. BPD always internalizes their anger. Where I'm about to square up, I'm about to tell him to come over, so it's time. You're so f***ing tough. Let's see how tough you are outside. We'll be outside. In public. Let's see how tough you are. Army sergeant. I said it's 80 degrees outside. You got the kids in the car with the windows rolled up. She said, I'm door dashing. Bring your ass to the drive through Bring your inside. She's talking on the phone. Her kids are in the car. What the f is are weird. Don't get it. Don't want anything to do with you, motherfucker. But with a BPD, it's completely opposite and different. A BPD always internalizes the anger. And he describes the BPD internalizing their anger. Some may describe this as a quiet borderline. I wish this quiet borderline thing didn't exist. I wish that medical professionals would stop telling clients that they have quiet BPD as the four subtypes that, what's his name, Theodore, um, came up with these subtypes that do not fit. They do not fit in the description of these four subtypes. You can have symptoms in different subtypes that fit many different people. And when you ask someone who identifies as a quiet borderline, in which I like to respect that they choose to identify for whatever reason. That's your own business. I'm not going to attack you because of it. I just don't think it's it's a thing. I made a video about it. Nine different symptoms. You have to have five for a diagnosis. Yeah, we present differently. But four subtypes? To talk about quiet BPD. What I think you're describing is someone who is more agreeable who who in turn would rather internalize their anger to avoid conflict whereas someone like me i'm very low in agreeableness a lot of us with bpd who externalize our our anger are we narcissists no we're not do we have cptsd both narcissists and borderlines absolutely are we in the same cluster yes Number two, the reaction to the abandonment. A covert narcissist would abandon you first before you would abandon them out of their entitlement and grandiosity. But a person with, with BPD would do everything in their capacity to make sure that you do not leave them. No, 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 no. Ultimately, the borderline's goal is one, is at least unconscious goal. He's one and only. I'm going to dump you before you dump me. I sense abandonment or engulfment i'm getting out of there well at least my younger self a thousand people like that video that's incorrect videos wrong so far number third the empathy and a covert narcissist because of their narcissism do not feel true empathy but a bpd would feel empathy however the difference is that it is felt in extremes bpd empathy we have a deficit in cognitive empathy some of us we do have effective empathy and ability to feel what other people are feeling say you come home sad okay i'm feeling that you're sad I'm gonna i'm gonna be caring and ask what's wrong and listen to you I have already described on my channel that i lack cognitive empathy my lack of cognitive empathy there's different kinds of empathy. Not being able to, I can feel you're upset. I have the effect of empathy, feeling you're upset, even if you don't acknowledge it. When it comes to cognitive empathy, there was a time I described where my past partner was upset. And I, it just, I didn't understand. And I'm trying to wrap my head around it, but it's still not making sense to me. And I'm like, there's something 
something's off if I can't understand. I I feel you're upset and I'm sorry, but I just don't know. Don't get it. Not clicking. I would really truly believe anyone could make a victim channel or make a channel where it's hate towards modern men or hate towards modern women. Modern women are they shinish. Who the fuck do you think raised? Oh, they didn't. Oh, oh. The the modern w- women are a problem. Not her f- father. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but those kind of channels, in my opinion, um, could be monetized fast. Victim channels. My thought of victim channels. I think are for weak people and this is coming from myself attracting narcissistic men that remind me of my mother being on different victim platforms trying to figure it out but staying there staying there I think that's the issue staying there Um, to learn you keep learning the same things I think that uh, people can become obsessive about someone else's disorder instead of looking back at ourselves what's attracting us to these people to other disordered people okay and yeah that's my video i know someone may be triggered by this video if you are triggered by something that i say i just recommend you speak to your therapist about it And yeah, that's my video. Someone's going to be upset. Oh my gosh, look at her cleavage. Her bra was showing. It's slutty. She's histrionic. One of the fastest ways you could um, become monetized on YouTube is to make up a narcissistic victim channel okay surviving narc abuse okay you could you could literally say okay a narcissist made boiled eggs and didn't give me one and that's like a sign like people come out up with anything people who use filters they're narcissists any person with okay insecurities or even body dysmorphia May you someone someone with insecurities uses uses filters. Hi, you're so beautiful. Don't kill me. <laughs> oh, you're so beautiful. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs>